afternoon or even good evening from all of you, depending on your time. Welcome to Supporting Local Businesses Station today. Together with me, I'm Felicia from Jakarta, Indonesia. And today I won't be alone because I will have some amazing people from the local guides community that will accompany me today, such as one of our local business champion from Guiding Star 2020. He is Alexander. Hello, everyone. Nice, nice to have you guys here. And I'm seeing other local business champions here, Hichi and Falgani, probably other ones. And welcome to our session. Farid. <laughs> yeah, we will also have Farid. We will share the presentation, the amazing videos. Hi, Farid. Farid, would you like to unmute yourself? <laughs> or shall we continue with the other? We also have our very nice chat moderator. We have Shirley here. Hi, Shirley. Hi, it's Shirley from Canada. I'm going to help <laughs> out with the chat and the questions as well. Um, so please remember to post the questions in the Q&A. It's that little triangle next to the chat but yeah. feel free to use the chat. Yeah. And last but not least, we will have two special guest stars. The first one is our Velo Connect, is our Velo Local Guide. She is Kristin. Hi, Kristin. Hi, my name is Kristin. I live in the UK and I'm a level nine local guide. Yay. And the other guest star, his name is Carlos. He's not a part of the local guide yet, but we will, reveal, we will reveal about him soon. It's a secret. So stay tuned in this session. Okay, guys, before we begin the session, first thing first, there are some session rules that we have to follow. The first one is like the other session and breakout session, we will record this session to be shared later at a, to the public because for those who cannot attend this session or maybe for those who want to rewatch it again, we will upload it soon to the public. And please mute yourself and feel free to use the chat or the Q&A section that Shirley had said before to ask the question there. And don't forget to use the hashtag CommunityLife2020 if you want to post anything about this event to your social media. And please do have your video camera turned on because we really love to see your friendly and happy face today. And the last, for those who are on the mobile phone, please hold your phone in a landscape mode. Thank you, guys. Let's begin for the next slide. Well, before we begin about the contribution, I would like to inform you guys about the surprising facts regarding the loss that the local businesses are suffering because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is what happened in my country, Indonesia. 84% of small businesses are experiencing a decrease in income. And the three local businesses that get the biggest loss, like the accommodation, food and beverage, imagine, there are 92% decrease in income. This is a very large percentage for that. And the last is the transportation. So Alexander, how about the condition in Brazil? Well, here in Brazil, it's very similar. Uh, most of the Brazilian local business, they needed to change the way how they work. So um, some of them, unfortunately, needed to temporarily close their activities. So they were very, very impacted by the pandemic. So as a local guide, we can help them a lot by keeping the maps up to date. The more impacted sectors in Brazil were tourism, restaurants and bars, small retailers and events. Next. Well, uh, what we could do to support the local business. This is from my perspective or also from some of my friends. And I believe that most of you guys will also agree with this one. The easiest way is always prioritize to buy from the local first, either it's a product or service. And if you feel satisfied with the product or service that they provide to you, please also do recommend it to your families, friends, through the one of the most powerful marketing tools. It's like the word of mouth. And you could also use the digital words such as your social media, like your Instagram, your Twitter, Facebook, to help to recommend and promote the local business. 
And next slide, please. Well, this is what we could do as a local guide to through the contribution on Google Maps in supporting the local business. So this is the very basic, I guess, because it's related to the review, photo, and video. Please write the informative review as informative and detailed as possible. For example, such as, you know, like the COVID-19 pandemic right now, uh, when we visit the restaurant or cafe or another public place, we could write the review as informative by saying like, well, the staffs are doing the temperature checking, whether the staffs are wearing the face mask or like, you know, like the face shield. And uh, this is another good example. If you want to write a review about a restaurant or cafe, like in Indonesia, most of the restaurants here are not provided any menu book again because so they, they use like the pictures above. You, you could see the picture below. It's the barcode. So it's very easy. You just need to take your mobile phone with you, turn uh, with the camera, you get close to the barcode, and then automatically you will see the menu directly on your mobile phone. So you could also state on the review that the restaurant or cafe is providing the barcode that you could scan later to see the menu directly on your phone. And don't also just say it on the review. You could also include it as the pictures and then also the video that support the review. So please provide also the photos and videos as clear as possible. So Alexander, would you like to give the local guide some useful tutorial in how to do the contribution on Google Maps? Okay, uh, probably for some of you, but oh, just a, a small video now. Uh, yes, uh, there's no sound for it. Farish, Farid, you're still muted. Please, uh, okay. Then scroll down and you'll find more ways to share. Check the facts, or uncover missing info, and answer questions. Uh, Farid, can you run the, the view again, please? Okay. Oh, just a moment, Farid, just a moment, please. Just, uh, just to explain you back. Click on Google Maps. Then click on Contribute More on the bottom tab. Now you will click on More Ways to Contribute. Then scroll down and you'll find more ways to share. Check the facts, uncover missing info, and answer questions. Oh, okay. Thank you for it. And uh, yes, I, it's just a small tutorial if you have an Android smartphone. Uh, probably for most of you guys, it's simple. Most of your guys already do it, but uh, I, it's, I, myself, for example, when I start being a local guide, what I usually do were uploading photos or writing reviews, but there are a lot of ways that you can I also use Google Maps to support local business. So one way is using the Please follow the, the next slide is, uh, next slide for it, please. Okay, uh, there are a lot of ways that you can do to, to help small business. One is adding new places here or suggesting an edit. Probably you guys are familiar with this feature, but just in case if you are not so familiar, you can do that. Next slide, please. Uh, there are other options. You can also uh, answer questions and answers. You can also answer these uh, yes or no and simple questions. And just in case you don't know how to find these questions, it's the, the tutorial video that we showed to you. Next, please. Uh, here there are more options, more questions that you can answer. Uh, so you can help small business by answering these questions and you begin, uh, gain points on local guides as well. Next. Uh, and here is uh, something that I am doing during the, the pandemic. I have you in my takeaway and deliveries. 
So what I like to do is take photos from, from it so people can know uh, a little bit how and uh, what they will expect when they order uh, similar food. So you can order here. If it's a restaurant, you know, you can add the caption, you can describe Not audible. Dish. So you, uh, you can uh, describe the dish. You can also, like uh, Feliciana said, you can write uh, useful reviews about the COVID-19 prevention guidelines. So it's a review that I wrote. I'm not sure if you can read it. If you are a smartphone, probably not. But I was just inform people that the staff there using a mask, they are following the correct guidelines. Next, for it. So here's uh, other things that you can use to do. It's un the uncovered missing information on the right side and the, on the left, left side is check the facts. This video that I, I show you, you will find these options. So you can filter, for example, by phone and you can look for the places in orange. You can click them and you can check if the, this, this phone is correct. What I usually do is I call them if I have time, free time and if I have my data plan uh, is fine, so I can call them and confirm if the number is correct. If it's correct, I will say it. You don't need to use your smartphone to do that, but feel free to use if you like to do like I, I do. And the other is the uncover missing information. You can find the phone number by getting around or even in social media, so you can also uh, adding this information uh, on Google Maps. Next, please. Well, now, uh, Feli, can you tell us a little bit about what you are doing as a local guide to support small business, please? Yeah, sure. Just like you, what you did, I also very, very supporting the local businesses during the pandemic. Like, you know, my mom always cooks every day, especially during the weekdays. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I, I discovered a new hobby, which is cooking. And I mostly I cook during the week weekend when my mom cooks on the week weekdays and I am on the weekend we always buy the ingredients such as the vegetable meat seasoning and the other from the traditional market in our area inside the traditional market there are lots of local businesses that selling the ingredients and if you can see in the left there are three photos in the left side there are some of the pictures from the traditional market in my area where me and my mom always comes to buy the ingredients for cooking at home. And, you know, I'm feeling very, very happy and glad to see that most of the vendors or the sellers there are still excited, ex exist until right now, even though because of the pandemic that happens. And also uh, talking about food, <laughs> you know, most of you will know that I'm a foodie local guide. So I really, really love to, to discover and explore the new food in my area. I always support for the FNB or food and beverage local businesses, such as the noodle, rice dish, and also as a coffee fan or coffee lovers, I really love to discover the coffee in my country. Uh, not only from the ready to drink coffee, but also uh, from the coffee bean or the coffee powder. I will show you some of my local businesses coffee collection that I have at home. Uh, well, this is, if you can see it, this is uh, Toraja Coffee, originally from Makassar, South Sulawesi, Indonesia, using the, this one is the Robusta Coffee. And it is also, the Toraja Coffee from Makassar, South Sulawesi, Indonesia. This one is from the Arabica Coffee. And also I have, I have lots of coffee at home. <laughs> I only show you some of my coffee collection. And all of them are coming from the local business in Indonesia. And this one, the small one, this is originally from Bogor, West Java, Indonesia. And if you guys are coffee lovers just like me, or if you like to discover like coffee, tea, or another beverages in your country, please do. 
and please support the local business in your country because believe me that you, when you discover the coffee tea or another beverage in your country you will feel very proud and you will find that wow i never imagined that my country will have this kind of very very great and tasty drink such you know our friends in india there there are lots of varieties of tea right like my favorite masala chai okay am i spelling it right yeah you could discover lots of interesting beverage from your country and just like this year me and my family members when we celebrated our birthday we always choose the sweet treats or the cake from the local bakery and not only enjoying the good taste from the food and drink instead we i also will review it on the google maps by reviewed as informative as possible, providing the detailed photos and videos, and also doing some verification just like what Alexander has done, such as updating the operational hours, the telephone number, in, uh, updating also the information, information whether they are still running the business or not, temporarily open, uh, permanently closed, and whether they provide like the uh, takeaway delivery, takeaway service, delivery service, curbside pick up, then in option, and the other. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. Well, guys, this is probably what we are waiting for because we will have our very, very special guest, special guest stars. She is our fellow local guide. Please welcome, Christine. Hi. My name is Kristen, and on the Connect, I am at Real Kristen. So thank you so much for having me on the call. It's an honor, and I just really hope that I can inform and inspire you through my sharing today. I'm originally from California in America, but now I live in the United Kingdom as a digital nomad. Next slide, please. This year, I sold my second successful bubble tea shop, Bubble Boba in Coventry, UK, which I owned for five years that I started from scratch. I created all of the drinks, recipes, design, and overall feel of everything. The new owners of the Coventry location decided to keep the name and brand so you can still find information about it on Google Maps, including older photos and older reviews. The year before, I sold my other shop in Cardiff, but that owner converted it to a different company. Next slide, please. My shops received numerous awards from reputable companies, including best customer service, best tea shop, cafe, et cetera. Next slide, please. So I sold my shop, Bubble Boba, on the 1st of September due to a very difficult spring and summer of COVID lockdowns. It was too difficult finding staff and bubble tea supplies during a time of crisis. I could see very tough times ahead for any brick and mortar small business. And I felt the need to move online and become more digital. The ending was sad, of course. I handed over the keys at the five year anniversary party, but I was also happy for a new future chapter of my life and career. Next slide, please. Today, you're going to learn how to make Hokkaido milk tea using powder. Hey guys, I'm Kristen, the bubble tea queen, and welcome to my channel. So with my new YouTube channel I created called Bubble Tea Expert, I have found ways to teach people all over the world how to make award-winning bubble tea drinks using my own recipes and techniques that I customized over the years. Instead of relying on customers to physically come into my shop, I am now showing them a way to make drinks from home at a fraction of the cost. I also created a website where people can inquire to me on how to open their own bubble tea shops. This allows me to work remotely from anywhere in the world, when the world reopens, of course, and offers numerous opportunities for me to travel, which is one thing I love the most. Next slide, please.
When it comes to inspiration, I have an immense love for food and non-alcoholic drinks, and I usually plan my trips and vacations around it. For example, others are interested in riding a roller coaster at an amusement park, but I have already researched what is the most unique food and pinned it on Google Maps. Next slide, please. So discussing our topic today, there's a famous saying, small businesses are the lifeblood of the economy. Looking back now, I can see that my business was an important and it served a certain niche of people in the community who then felt connected and appreciated. I truly believe that Google Maps was a super important role in helping my business to grow and become established in the city. The free Google Small Business Program also used to send me free weekly and monthly stats, which showed me valuable information that is useful to an owner. I really feel that Google wants small businesses to succeed. Next slide, please. What's it like to receive reviews as a business owner? Well, it can be intimidating, especially in the beginning, to ask for reviews. I didn't want to ask customers I had only served once because that's not fair. And it can also be scary asking customers who shopped regularly because if they forgot to leave a review, they might be embarrassed. But it is important to build rapport with customers and over time ask for reviews in order to grow the business. When I saw teenagers taking pictures of their drinks and posting to social media, I would suggest they post the pictures to our Google Maps page also. Many people didn't know they could do this, and sometimes it gave me a chance to quickly let them know also about the Local Guides community. Next slide, please. I think as a customer, it's a good idea to say to the owner or staff, do you mind if I leave you a good review on Google Maps? I can also add some pictures if it's okay. This usually makes them really happy and they will allow you to take pictures. They sometimes remember you the next time you come in and appreciate you more because you have done them a huge favor by leaving a good review to encourage others to shop at their business. I like to think of leaving a review as sharing to two people the owner and the potential customer. So first, let's pretend you're talking directly to the owner. What would you say? For me, as an owner, it was helpful to see things like, I liked the vibes of the place. The staff was great. I will come again. For a customer, they'd want to know, the drinks were delicious, good prices, accessible location, and maybe they offer a Braille menu. If you're going to leave less than a five-star rating, do everyone a favor and share why. Why you didn't give a full five stars. For example, the service is always slow. It takes 45 minutes to get my drink every time. The music is always too loud. The location is not accessible to any disabilities whatsoever. Next slide, please. This is an interesting situation of a negative review for my business that was useless. This person basically made up a strange situation that never occurred and left a one star. But still, as a business owner, we must address them politely. So maybe you're thinking, do I always need to leave a perfect five star review? Sometimes simply putting five stars is enough. Nothing more needs to be said. We understand you like our business and that's great. But if you're going to be able to leave feedback, it does help immensely. And actually, a negative review isn't always a bad thing. 
they can be quite valuable to help a small business owner to improve if done correctly. How you explain the idea, what can be approved upon, can make a huge impact to someone's livelihood. So please bear this in mind when leaving a review. Fair and well, well thought out feedback is very important to both the owner and the customer. The owner can hopefully do their best to improve over time, and the customer can make a non-emotional decision whether or not they want to go to that business. Next slide, please. My last idea to share is this. Sometimes as a customer, I'll leave five stars with a detailed review. And at the very end, I'll put a side note of something that is important or needs to be improved, but I still think the place deserves five stars. For example, the air conditioning was too cold for my liking. Be sure to bring a sweater just in case you get cold easily like me. This is a good point for everyone to know that although I was cold, this doesn't mean I would take away a star or a point only just to let others know about this fact. Next slide, please. Thank you so much for having me be a part of this event. And I really hope that sharing my experience will offer some insight into the world of a small business owner and the value that each and every local guide brings to their local communities. Yay. Bravo. Thank you so much. Bravo. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, Christine. It's such an honor to have you today. Very helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> and guys, we not only have Christine as a special guest star here, we will also have another special guest star. Let me introduce about him. He is Carlos Gitlin, an entrepreneur, a chocolate maker. He is the from Argentina. He is the owner of a chocolate bar brand. It is called Chinoa. And the factory that he built it is called Happiness Factory. Well, Carlos might not be here today with us on the Google Meet, but he's already prepared a very special video for our local guides community, and it is also recorded by Ferit. So let's we play the video from Carlos. Next slide, please. My name is Carlos Vitrin. I'm an engineer industrial. We're living here in Rio Grande, in Tierra del Fuego. Estamos a tan solo mil kilómetros de la Antártida, en la Patagonia Sur Argentina, y este establecimiento se llama Chinoa y es la fábrica de chocolates Vintubar, de Grano a la Barra, más austral del mundo. En el país solo somos cuatro empresas las que fabricamos bajo esta eh, filosofía, que consiste básicamente en fabricar chocolate desde el grano de cacao, el cual nosotros importamos desde Ecuador. Los traemos en estas, en estas bolsas de 69 kilos. Acá los podemos ver. Estos son los granos de cacao. Y finalmente acá en la, en la planta los separamos para que tengan todos una geometría similar. Los tostamos con un perfil determinado. Depende de la tableta que nosotros queramos fabricar. Y finalmente los descascarillamos separando lo que es la cascarilla del nib de cacao. Este nib de cacao luego lo refinamos por más de 48 horas en una refinadora y finalmente lo templamos, lo moldeamos y lo, y lo empaquetamos. Y actualmente estamos eh, vendiéndolo en el mercado interno, pero también estamos llegando a distintos países, a Hong Kong y a Estados Unidos. Esta filosofía y este tipo de negocios es muy particular. Nosotros tenemos eh, cuatro ejes en nuestra propuesta de valor. Una es hacer conocer el verdadero sabor del de chocolate puro. Eh, la otra es la indulgencia, entender que este tipo de filosofía lo que apunta es a comprar a pequeños productores de Centroamérica, con lo cual el salario es mucho más justo que el que cotiza en bolsa, permitiendo economías más sustentables. 
Y por otro lado, también lo que queremos es que nuestras tabletas de chocolate cuenten historias de nuestro lugar, de la Patagonia Sur Argentina. Y por último, el cuarto eje es generar felicidad. Claramente, nosotros tenemos definido el producto de esa manera. Tanto en el consumo individual como colectivo del chocolate, buscamos que se generen momentos de felicidad. Cuando me preguntan por la génesis del proyecto, la mejor forma de explicarlo es a través de esta obra que le encargué a una artista amiga. Esta obra sintetiza básicamente el origen de nuestro emprendimiento, que tiene que ver con reivindicar a la ingeniería como ente transformador del mundo, que tiene que ver con nuestra historia acá en Tierra del Fuego, y lo hacemos a través del Playero Rojizo, que es una ave migratoria muy característica de la zona, la pueden googlear con Boom Bird y van a encontrar detalles de este ave. Eh, la ingeniería tiene que ver con las cotas que le dejamos al cuadro y también en la forma de plano con su rótulo acá, que es el logo de, de nuestra empresa. Eh, y básicamente lo que, lo que buscamos, como decíamos, era reivindicar la ingeniería, hablar y contar historias de Tierra del Fuego a través de, de nuestras tabletas de, de chocolate y la estética que se eligió es una estética steampunk. Steampunk es una corriente cultural que se da en Inglaterra en los años 80 que hace una mirada nostálgica de la primera revolución industrial y cuestiona la segunda revolución industrial, que es la del taylorismo y la del fordismo. De alguna manera lo que nos dice es metamos toda la ingeniería que tengamos que meter para nuestros procesos, para optimizarlos, pero que nuestro producto sea un producto diferenciado, que no sea algo estrictamente estandarizado. Así que de esta forma, con este, esta estética steampunk, eh, con nuestro placer rojizo característico de la Patagonia Sur y con esta forma de plano, eh, hemos logrado sintetizar la génesis de nuestro proyecto y claramente en estos momentos eh, de pandemia donde es muy difícil para todos los emprendedores surgir, bueno nosotros estamos avanzando quizá posicionándonos fuerte como marca a través de estas raíces tan grandes que, que tenemos. Estas son nuestras variedades de productos, todas eh, orgánicas, de cacao orgánico con nips de cacao, sin lactosa, sin soja y básicamente lo que queremos es eso, es que se conozca el verdadero sabor de nuestro chocolate y que fabriquemos felicidad. Dentro de acá está la felicidad y la idea es que cada uno encuentre su propio Chinoa. Bueno, desde Chinoa estamos sumamente agradecidos a que hayan pensado en nosotros y que nos hayan visitado y les mandamos un saludo muy grande desde el fin del mundo a todos los local guides que tanto hacen por este planeta. Gracias. Okay. Well, guys, can you imagine if we are not in the virtual event? Probably we could get a sample of the chocolate bar from Chinoa. <laughs> I'm also very excited for that. But although no worries for that, although we are in the virtual, but we could learn a lot from today's session, right? So this is almost the end of our session in supporting local businesses. I think we only have 15 minutes left, right? Uh, to the next session. So this is the Q&A session. Uh, Shirley, is there any question from the local guide that we could answer it today? Hi, everyone. Yes, there's mm -hmm. a handful of questions. Um, let, let me, I, I'm just going through them because it turns out people on mobile mm -hmm. do not have access to that part. So I'm just going through the questions right now. Um, But let's start with one that is in the Q&A for Kristen. Um, so this is from Mariani. Uh, hi, Kristen. Nice presentation. I want to know what is your plan to make businesses always up in pandemic era? You are very brave. Awesome. So perhaps, Kristen, if you can address that, please, for us. Yeah. Um, 
So for my business, because uh, I know in the question you said how to how to make uh, your your business always up in the pandemic era. Um, so for the actual businesses, the brick and mortar businesses, I've I've sold all of them, um, and I'm going on online now and being a digital nomad. Um, but for my businesses that I'm selling potentially for people to open their own bubble tea shop, where I do consultations and I travel, um, help people to set up their own shops. Um, that is actually a bit more busy than I had expected because I think from my perspective, I look at opening a shop right now as something a bit risky, at least in the Western world. It seems like in a lot of different countries around the world, actually, um, small businesses are doing quite well. But here in the UK, unfortunately, I, I don't really see that happening. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. A lot of businesses are either going bankrupt or closing. And um, I don't remember the statistics, but there was one that had it from, um, I believe it was from Google Maps that showed the amount of businesses that are either closed currently and or ha have gone out of business. But regardless, there's still a lot of businesses that are reaching out that either want to add bubble tea to their pre-existing business or they want to start a new business. And um, the one piece of advice that I give to them is, uh, you know, start planning now and definitely go through everything that you need to be able to go through in your mind uh, financially and whatnot to actually open a business like you normally would. But just hold off a little bit. Don't rush into things as you might normally. Um, and also the other thing that I, I think really helps a lot of businesses that are open right now um, is a, just a social media awareness and uh, having that presence with the customer base of uh, different marketing tactics that people might not normally use. Um, and word of mouth is also very important right now more than ever because word needs to get out that places are open. As many of you have probably seen actually, you might look on Google Maps and it says it's open, but then you actually get there and it's closed. So not only is this a good opportunity for us as local guides to be able to update Google Maps listings with new hours or maybe um, you know advising the business owners if you know them or the local community of, of business owners maybe through the the, um, the city council to let those businesses know to not only claim their google business but once they claim it then to do updates because um, at least for uh, when i go on google maps and i research a business right away somewhere towards the top it shows an update from the owner like, hey guys, we've put you know COVID measures in place, which obviously is super important right now, of course. And then number two, it says, you know, hey, we've updated our listing uh, hours. We're only open Saturday and Sunday, or we're only open from 12 to five. And so those things are super important right now for business owners. And we as local guides want to, again, push for them to, to make sure they join that free program. Um, and it's as simple as, you know, they, they go on uh, to the uh, Google Maps, uh, small business website and or the app and they just register their business they go through the process and then right away they have access to it and it's just it's such an amazing resource and I know one other person asked um, how is it very similar to being a business owner and being a local guide and are you able to kind of introspectively see how how one and the other works and of course the obvious answer is yes but I also think it's important because I know, like I mentioned in my pre presentation, what kind of reviews an owner would want. So I try to leave those reviews, but I also know as an owner, what kind of reviews a customer wants. So I also try to leave those reviews. So if possible, I think it's really important to look at both sides when leaving reviews, the owner and the customer. Um, and then that way that will help the business to improve and it will also help customers to potentially want to shop there. So hopefully that kind of roundabout answers a few questions at the same time. Okay, thank you, Christine. Um, yeah, that actually addressed the second <laughs> question there as well. Um, so this question is from Peter Williams, this next one. It's probably a bit more generic and perhaps we can open it up to Phil, uh, Phil as well as Alexander for response. Sure. Hey guys, a question. Um, if you left a review of a business before the pandemic, you no longer leave a review now. How do we support these businesses, which are often the most local to us and the, or the most dear to us? So I'll open yeah. that up to all of you. 
Well, uh, what I'm using to do now, for example, is I, I am editing some of my reviews because, for example, when I visit a restaurant, it's different. It's a different experience by ordering uh, online or a delivery. So what I'm doing now, for example, is editing my reviews and add information about the, the deliveries and takeaways. And like we said, we can also help this small business by keeping their phone number and website updated so people will be able to find them and still buy them. Because a lot, a lot of restaurants here in Brazil and now around the world, they are uh, losing revenue because of the pandemic, because, you know, uh, even they offer delivering, it's not the same as you having people come to your restaurant. Maybe uh, Feli would like to, to add some information. Uh, well, uh, I think most of the answer is already answered by Alexander. But in my opinion, if you want to differentiate the previous review with the new one, you could also, uh, for example, in the review section, you could add some space or another signs that indicate that the first paragraphs or the first, the first one is the previous review. And then you could also add something like, uh, for example, the new update regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, whether they uh, maintaining the physical distancing, how about the staffs, are they wearing the face mask, are they doing the temperature checking, and for example, for a rest restaurant, whether they provide the non-touch menu, like the barcode one or the other. You could also add, I think this is the most powerful one, you could also add the photos that really supported, really supported about the condition right now, like uh, about the physical distancing that they practicing, about the, for example, like the barcode and something like that. Video is also important, I think. So everyone will know about the situation right now. Uh, so the customers won't get any fear or worry to visit the place. They will feel very safe to buy the products or get the service from the place. I think if enough for from from me do you want to add something alexander hmm. sure uh, perhaps we could loop over to kristen quickly in case she has some something to add from a business a small business owner perspective for this yeah actually um i was looking through the comments and the one thing that i thought of um which uh knew who Ibrahim had mentioned is um, sometimes people will leave a review and then I'll go back and I'll respond to it and then I'll go back later and it's kind of different and um, it's actually happened a few times where someone left like a four star and then I kind of left a comment and I um, responded to what they what they had mentioned to improve upon and then they actually ended up upgrading it to a five star and they left kind of a different review and I was like wait that wasn't the review I remember so my response looks a little different so um, in what Nuhu was saying in the comment section which is you can actually update uh, your review and from a business owner point of view again it's actually beneficial if you say like he said uh, which is star 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 updated review star 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 or star 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 older review star 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 and then that way the people reading it know oh this person had a really good experience before and now they're not sure about going there or oh this person um loved going there five months ago and they, they still love going there so i think that's actually a really good idea from a business owner point of view and also from a customer point of view to see the then uh, versus now type thing and know the difference uh, in the review of when that occurred Okay, thanks, Christine. Well, look, guys, we only have one minute left for this session. <laughs> I think it's too short, right? <laughs> but don't worry, for all of the questions that you asked before, we will answer it later on a connect post. <laughs> so you will please wait for that. And next slide, please. Well, this is a very, very simple message from us. For all of the local guides here, please keep supporting the local business. Thank you so much for joining this session and feel free to continue with the next session. The next is the Photography Plus from Paul, Luigi, and Ivan. And if you want to interact and socialize with the Connect moderators and also your fellow local guides, feel free to go to the social lounge. Thank you so much and see you again.
Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.